Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. And sorry, I'm going to jiggle the camera a little bit because I need to plug it in so my battery doesn't die. Hey, it's good to be back. Um, we are working on Blossom and we're going to start with a pocket page. This is eight by eight. Um, of course, you start with an eight and a half by eight and an eight and a half by eight and you join them together to make a pocket page. And um, this is a fun page. Um, this is something a little bit different. I've seen variations of it and I thought it was kind of cool and I'm always trying to think of something new to do. So let's go ahead and get started. So you're gonna start with a panel um, that is five by eight, five by eight, and you're gonna score half inch along the eight inch side. And it's gonna get installed on the left-hand side of your pocket page. And I'm just uh, measuring it up, make sure it's, or doing a quick dry fit to make sure it is the same size it is. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, and you're gonna install it on the, uh, the pocket side, which is, uh, in this case, on the left-hand side. Okay. There we go. Now this flap is going to have a small pocket attached to it, and this is four and a half by four and a half. You're gonna start with a square, and then you're gonna score a half inch on three of the four sides to create a pocket. It's going to get installed on the left-hand side of this flap. Okay, again, this is four and a half by four and a half, square three sides. You're going to place it in the lower left hand corner of this flap. Sorry, it grabbed before I was ready. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna get a contrast sheet real quick. Uh, sorry, easier said than done. I thought I had one handy, but. So this is the flap, so it's five by eight, score half inch, right? So um, now we've got this four and a half by four and a half and you're gonna score, score three sides. So your finished pocket is gonna be three and a half inches wide. So you're gonna have this space, and I'll raise it. You're gonna have a space between the edge of the pocket and this flap, okay? Now that's important because the next thing we're going to install is a flap and we're gonna we're going to install it right next to that pocket. So you're gonna have this flap on top of this flap, so it's gonna extend. Let me go ahead and put this in here so you can see better what I'm talking about. So this hinge is going to get installed right next to this pocket. Okay, and this is eight by eight, and you're gonna score half inch and four and a half. So it's kind of um, what I would call an accordion flap. This is going to get installed right next to that pocket. <clears throat> Gosh, I'm having a hard time today. I dropped that too soon again. And it didn't go in straight, so. Gotta lift that up and reposition it. And I'm tearing my paper, which is very frustrating. But it's all gonna get covered with um, designer paper. Sorry about that, guys. I probably should have just tore, taken off a little bit of the tape and then you know pulled it out after I had it positioned. But because I tore the paper, I'm just gonna add a, a little tiny bit of glue here. Um, where it picked up some of the cardstock on the back. Maybe. Good grief. I think part of my problem is I've got a lot of static in the air because uh, we've been running the heater. It's been so cold. Very, very rainy and cold here right now. Uh, well, at least for, for San Diego, which 
is nothing compared to what some of you guys are going through. Sorry about that. I guess uh, I haven't used my glue in a while, so it's not wanting to flow. <clears throat> it's really clogged. Well, shoot. There it goes, finally. Sorry about that. Um, let's get a couple drops of glue here. That's all, all we need. Okay, so again, this hinge is gonna get installed right next to um, this pocket. And I'm gonna try to do a better job getting it lined up before I actually let it grab the tape. And um, you can actually butt it right against that pocket and that helps you keep a straight line. Um, sorry, that was so difficult. But these things happen. I hope everybody's doing good. I was so happy to see all your feedback on the Folio album. That was a lot of fun. It was a little bit frustrating because it was something so new for me. But I, did, I do think it turned out pretty neat. Um, it's pretty substantial when you hold it and I think a lot of you have gone ahead and tried to make it. I think that's awesome. Okay, so now we've got this sort of accordion fold and you can see that we still have quite a bit of a hinge here and we are going to apply an extension to that, but we're gonna wait until we put the designer paper on here. And then what I've got is what I call an extended flap and it's gonna go here. And then when you open it, it'll, it'll lift that up. So it's gonna be kind of special. But that's not gonna go in until we put our designer paper there. So that's gonna be set aside for now, but I'm just giving you a heads up. So the next thing is a four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight, score half inch, and it's gonna get installed on the right-hand side of the page. And then that's it for the flaps and pockets until we start adding the designer paper, and then we're gonna add um, an insert for the pocket, and we're gonna add that extension. So I didn't dry fit this, so I'm gonna flip it over on the non-stick side and make sure it's the right size and looks good. Okay, so this is just getting installed right on the right-hand edge of the pocket page itself, the base pocket page itself. And there we go. So the way it's going to work is this flap will close down over that hinge, which will hold that in place, and then this is gonna close like so. So we do have um, this extension, which is three and three quarters by seven. So you'll need a three and three quarter by seven with no score lines. And then we have um, the insert for the pocket, which is three and a quarter by seven. So that's what's gonna go right here in this pocket. Three and a quarter by seven. And then this flap extension that we're going to apply and this flap extension is gonna get um, installed about halfway. Again, I think we need this. You're going to install the flap about halfway. So this is an inch, you're gonna bring it down about a half inch and install it. But again, I wanna get some designer paper on there before, before we add this, okay? So that's gonna go like that. And then this flap is gonna close over that and this will close like so. So let's get started with some of the, um, the designer piece papers that I've cut. And it looks like, this is from the Patterns and Solids. And I'm not sure, I've gotta go verify, but I think this is from the eight by eight. So hang on, I gotta test that real quick. Okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to confirm. This is, in fact, from the 8x8 eight, eight eight collection pack. And this is what we're going to put on this first flap. And hopefully I won't have to take another break um, to unclog my glue. Hopefully it'll work for us here. But if not, I'll just pause and then uh, get, this, get the glue flowing and then come right back. <laughs> Easier said than done. Here it goes. Okay. 
to go ahead and use a contrast piece right here so I can see my edge. Got a little too much glue down there. Okay. All right. I think I have to reconstruct this real quick because I'm. I chose my patterns and then I set it aside for a while. And it's easy to forget the order. I think this one goes here. I can't remember if these are both the same size. They are. So one of them is going on the the extreme right-hand panel um, that's attached to the pocket page, and then the other one's going to go on this accordion flap, like so. So what I'm looking to do is sort of frame out this, and then um, and then this is what I've chosen for the insert. And again, the, the pocket insert, and I'm trying to do a better job of letting you guys know what that is, three and one quarter by seven, three and one quarter by seven. I'm not gonna actually attach this right now because I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna crop my corners, which I don't usually do, um, but uh, I'm kind of thinking of, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so this is um, going to be the base here. And, um, what I'm planning to do is cut this so that I'm gonna cover the pocket and the back and then this will be the insert. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and figure out where, where we need to trim it for the pocket. And I got in here without a pencil, I hate that. I think I have to make this a little narrower as well. Okay. But let's first get it cut down to size, height-wise. Um, okay, so this is gonna cover the pocket, this will cover the back side, and then this is gonna be the insert. And I'm not positive, but I think it's from the 12 by 12. I'm gonna go check on that and get my pencil, and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. So uh, one of the things I went away to confirm was the size, this is actually come, came from the 12 by 12. And of course the stripe is from the patterns and solids. And let me double check this, but I'm pretty sure this is from the 12 by 12 as well. Yeah, this is from 12 by 12 as well. So both of these pieces are from the 12 by 12. This is from the 12 by 12 pattern and solid. And then this is from the eight by eight. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get these big pieces in. So this is the accordion flap. So the, the blue stripe is going on the inside of the accordion flap. like so, and then we're gonna open this accordion all the way up, and then the flap that's on the extreme right-hand side is going to have uh, the matching stripes. So 
always good to have a little piece of contrast cardstock laying around to, to help you better visualize. Oh, you know what? I gotta think for a second. I gotta think about magnets. I need a magnet here, so I'm glad I stopped. Yeah, we're gonna put a magnet here and here. And I'm gonna try to work fast. So that my glue doesn't completely dry. Oh my gosh, I am so ill prepared. I came in here without tape. I just, oh no, I have it. It's just not where it's supposed to be. It's normally on my left side and uh, it was over here on my right side. So I think I want it centered and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna try to get away with three magnets instead of four. Um, so a magnet here, a magnet here. Like so. And then we're still gonna need one more magnet um, to hold this closed. And I already put this down, but that's okay because I think I can put the magnet here on the uh, opposing panel. Yeah, I can. So this way we would use three magnets instead of four. Okay, and there we go. I probably should have ran the tape the other way just in case I wanted to color block here, but I'm okay. We can always move it later if we want to. Okay, now we can lay down this striped paper. more in the center. It looks like the edges are still wet enough. Okay, there's my contrast sheet. Now let's go ahead and get our pockets in. It's gonna go on the top, this is gonna to go on the bottom. I wanted to keep this simple because I think I'm gonna put some embellishments, either chipboard or some cut aparts right here. So I didn't wanna to have too much contrast going on here. So I kept it nice and simple, just a continuous pattern, which of course is gonna be interrupted by the pocket insert as well. Okay, and then this is a little bit too long, which is good because we're going to slip it slightly inside that pocket. And as usual, I'm going to leave the leading edge. And the leading edge is the edge that goes inside the pocket. I'm going to leave a half inch without glue. So if I have to back it back out, I'm not leaving a, a glue track behind. Okay, so now the last piece um, in the closed position is this is this pocket insert. And I'm just gonna put this in to hold it so you get an idea what it's gonna look like. It's getting stuck on the, the bottom flange. There we go. So when it's inserted all the way, you've got um, a little bit of a gap at the top. So I think I am gonna put a decorative edge on that. So this is the closed position. It's gonna open like so, like so, like so, like this, and then 
this is going to be attached here, okay? Now, I'm going to wait, like I said, I, I uh, want to put the decorative strip here. So I'm going to go organize my papers, and then we'll start working on the interior, and then I'm also going to locate uh, a corner rounder, cropper, or something, because I think I do want to have a decorative edge here. And then because I'm putting a decorative edge there, I think I also want to do the same thing on this, this piece that's going to uh, be right here. So it actually looks separate or different than the rest of the flaps. So when I come back, I will have that all uh, lined up and ready to go. Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on uh, page two and I've uh, got some of the papers laid out but I'm still making some decisions. But I wanna go ahead and glue down what decisions I've made before I repurp accidentally repurpose them. So we had, um, I had this set aside for the pocket insert and I was gonna do some decorative corners and then I, I can't find my tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. And um, I do think that this would have been a pretty, um, pretty if we cropped the corners. I need to, I need to go through and clean my craft room because I can't find anything right now. Um, but what I had originally was thinking um, was to do the ticket corners, you know, the kind of curved in um, on this to make it look a little bit more like a tag. Um, but it's still gonna be fine like this. I'm going to put an embellishment on it. I don't know what yet, but for now I'm just gonna put it in the pocket so I don't accidentally repurpose it for something else. Okay, so the next thing I did was I planned out uh, these papers. So, and that's that accordion, right? So that's the front. And what I've planned uh, here is to continue the stripes and then I'm gonna use this burgundy and this is from 12 by 12, this is from Patterns and Solids. And then I'm going to use uh, this on what's going to be the flap extender, like so. Okay? So that's what it's going to look like when it's all put together. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. I still need to ink my edges. So we, we have this, now I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna add this strip right here that's covering this one inch flange. And that's what we're going to attach this extension to. So this is about an inch, so I did this piece is um, seven eighths of an inch. So it's just under an inch. so it has a nice little border around it. And I probably could have gone a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Well, I can live with it. It's definitely out of the hinge area. Okay, now this is going to get adhered just like so. but I should probably make sure it's right side up. <laughs> just details, right? <laughs> so I am just going to eyeball this. And then this is gonna lay down right here. I think it's gonna look very pretty when it's all in. And then I still have to 
trim out and ink a couple more pieces. This is um, ha this uh, design has a lot of surface to cover. Okay, I mentioned it, but I'll say it again. Eight by eight, and this is from the twelve by twelve patterns and solids. And the burgundy. Honestly, I'm not sure. The 12 by 12 and the... The burgundy strip happened to be from the 12 by 12, but I don't think it matters. Um, you could, if you had a scrap that size from um, the eight by eight, that would be fine. It's the um, back of one of the cut aparts. Yeah, it's the 12 by 12 now that I'm looking at it for a few minutes, so there we go. So we still need to find something for in here, but I wanna show you how that's all gonna look. And that's going to open up and we still have a lot of surface area to cover in here. So I think that's kind of fun. <clears throat> now if I had planned this right, I think I might have moved that in a little bit more so that it wasn't exposed. So let's see, can I lift it without too much damage? I think I can. I think I'm going to scoot it in. So you guys might want to consider that before you put it down. I don't have... my spatula in here for some reason. Yeah, I can get it up. And remember the back of it's going to be covered, so it doesn't matter if you've got a little torn paper, as long as you don't tear the edge. So, learn from my mistake. Um, Oh, well, that's gonna get covered because we're gonna push this right back on top of it. But um, I think what I'll do this time is I'm gonna figure out where it's gonna land, carefully open it, and then I'll draw a little line. I, I can see that it where it needs to be, but you can draw a line, and then you'll know where to put this. And then we still have that sort of the stripes uninterrupted on the cover. And I'm going to go ahead and put a bead on this side too. Okay. So slide it in. Make sure that it's hidden. I'm going to check it one more time before I press it into place. Easy peasy. Yep, now we still have this continue, continuous pattern. There we go. So I haven't designed a flap to go on this side and I, I went ahead and cut out a five by seven piece and I think that's what I'm gonna do is put a five by seven on the flip side of this, um, just as a photo mount. You can see it better this way. Um, and then I'll cover this as well. So. It'll make it a little bit more rigid, um, and I think it'll be more interesting. I'm not gonna use the green here, but you can see that that's a five by seven card and that'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and trim that out. I didn't cover that in the first part of the build, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim that a five by seven. Real quick. Five by seven. And then this is just gonna get glued right on top of the back of this flap. But I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm gonna cover this first and then I'm gonna add this, okay? So we're gonna set that aside. We need to make some decisions about our patterns right here. And that's how it's all gonna go. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize, I didn't have to push this down because I had it closed like this and that's not really how it closes. You're supposed to close it inside of this flap. So it would have been okay in its original position. So I just, it would have just come up a little further on this page and that's fine. Okay, well, that is it for now. I need to take a break and organize the rest of my papers. I'll be right back. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on the B sides of, uh, I lost my train of thought, page two. Um, so I think I've got everything ready 
trimmed and inked. And I made another change, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, and I did it based on um, the size scrap I have, um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so we are pulling the, the primary pattern back in. And this is from the eight by eight. Okay, so then it opens like so. We have this flap that goes out. This is gonna go here, and then this goes like this, and that goes like that. So on the very base, we've got our eight by eight pocket page here. We're gonna lay in this pattern. It is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. I think this is very pretty. It reminds me of Oriental Garden. Okay, and then um, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack as well. It's the cut apart page. And since I already have an ephemera pack, I wasn't planning on using the ephemeras, the cut aparts. Sometimes I will if there's something different in the cut aparts that doesn't look or looks different than what's in the um, journal ephemera pack. But quite frankly, I couldn't give up the sheet. I needed it. Okay, and this goes on the side. <clears throat> cover all right um, now the last piece is I had trimmed out this five by seven that was going to lay on top and I was going to put decorative paper turns out the scrap size I have isn't wide enough so I'm going to trim this down so that I can utilize uh, the scrap that I have which means in this case, it needs to be four and a quarter by seven. Four and a quarter by seven. And then I can utilize um, the piece that I had trimmed off the 12 by 12. Like so. Actually, it needs to be four and one eighth by, there we go. A little bit more. Okay, then we can use the scrap, reinforce that panel, and decorate it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually apply the decorative paper and then add it to the back of that, what I'm calling a flap extension. I have to remind myself to add this to the cut list because this was a change I just made in progress. Oh, well, now I under trimmed it. <laughs> I need to start over. Let me double check the size of this. It is four and one eighth. So it should be four and a quarter. By seven. Now I'm gonna put it on upside down, see if I can't make it fit. Kind of a wonky size because I'm working with a scrap, a piece of scrap. Let's see if that's gonna work. Yep, okay. I'm gonna refresh my glue and put it down. Okay. Double check my size here. So it turned out to be 
Uh, it's a smidge under four and a quarter. Um, but it really depends on the piece of scrap that you have left. So basically I made it seven inches tall and then I narrowed it to the scrap that I had trimmed off from the 12 by 12 over here. Now I'm just gonna add it uh, to the back, what's gonna be the back of this panel, okay? And that's gonna kind of reinforce the flap or the flap extension. And it also makes a nice photo mount spot. Both. And it makes for this beautiful continuous spread interweaving the patterns, so I think that looks nice. Okay, so now we're gonna close it all up and I think we're done. Um, so this closes, then this closes on top of it, and this closes, and then of course we open it there. So there's a lot going on on this one, I like it. Um, I just think this little lever is kind of cool. Um, and I have seen it in a couple of things. I've also seen people do something fancy and actually cut it out and do some score lines. But when I tried to do it that way, um, that was the first time I had seen that um, sort of mechanism. And it just didn't feel rigid enough to me. Um, I think it makes for an interesting card, but for an album, I think it needed a little more body. So I just glued a panel to it rather than cutting it out and scoring it. So it's a, it's a variation of uh, page design or a pop-up that I had seen both in cards and in other albums. But like I said, when I tried to do it, by trimming and scoring to create that pop or extension. It just, uh, it just didn't feel, it felt a little too flimsy, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, that's it for page two. As you can see, there's a lot of paper in this one. So um, what I, um, I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Yeah, I think it looks cool. Anyway, so that's the first time I've tried that that mechanism, and I like it. Um, that's the end of page two. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and share this with other like-minded crafters. And I also want to note that we do have a Facebook group under Scrap and Create where viewers and shoppers like you come and share their projects um, and their tips and techniques. And it's a it's a nice place to share. Our community is growing, and it's really nice. So um, people contribute, you know, their own variations on these projects or their own projects in their entirety. And it's kind of nice. So hop on over to Scrap and create a Facebook group and um, join. We'd love to see you there. Thanks again. I'll be back soon.